Good morning. My name is Philip Williams. I'm the CEO of Consolidated Uranium. I'm very excited this morning to talk to you about a new transaction that we announced today, the acquisition of Virginia Energy and the Coles Hill Uranium project in Virginia. Coles Hill is the largest undeveloped uranium deposit in the US. We're very excited to add it to our portfolio. I'm gonna run you through a few slides right now to take you through the details of the transaction. First slide, of course, is the disclaimer. Next slide is the, the transaction highlights. Why did we do this transaction? First of all, it continues the consolidation strategy. Many of you that know the company know that we've been very active in the last couple of years building our portfolio. We've acquired 18 projects in four jurisdictions around the world, including the US. The acquisition of the, the Coles Hill project adds the largest undeveloped uranium asset in the US to this global portfolio. The transaction based on the price that we're paying is accretive on multiple metrics. On a per pound basis, this is one of the lowest price acquisitions that we've done in our history. The acquisition builds on our track record of successful M&A and solidifies our status as one of the fastest growing uranium developers in the space. And now post the transaction, we're strongly positioned as a emerging uranium development developer poised for enhanced market exposure. Some details of the transaction, we're acquiring Virginia Energy by way of a plan of arrangement. The exchange ratio is 0.26 common shares of CUR for every BUR shares. We need to get approval of the Virginia shareholders and that meeting will be held early in the new year. Importantly, we have strong support for the transaction. Not only do the directors did the directors and officers of Virginia support the transaction, but two of their main shareholders being Energy Fuels and Mega Uranium also supported the transaction and they've signed voting support agreements. As part of the transaction, we're investing a million dollars into Virginia at 50 cents a share to fund working capital, a lease extension payment, and some of the costs towards closing. Again, the transaction will be voted on by Virginia shareholders early in the new year and we expect to close shortly, shortly thereafter. It's a very busy slide, but some of the key transaction metrics that's important for people to, to see as part of the transaction. Again, it's a 0.26 ratio. The offer price equates to about 50 cents per share based on the closing prices of, our, of the CUR shares and the Virginia shares yesterday. And the total purchase price is about $32 million. Pro forma, post the acquisition, we should be about 175 million market cap with over $20 million in cash. We talked about Mega and Energy Fuels. They're actually shareholders of both companies. And you can see on the bottom right, how post the transaction, both of them will continue to be significant shareholders of the company, as well as directors of, and officers of both companies. And the, uh, and the URNM ETF will own about 3.8% of the company pro forma. The premium for the acquisition based on the spot price is about 57%. Um, however, if you look at it on a 5, 10, or 20-day VWAP basis, the premium is about is somewhere between 30 and 40%. So why are we doing this transaction? I think this slide really sums it up, and I encourage people to look at this in more detail. It will be posted on our website. This acquisition increases our focus on the U.S., particularly as a standout project. Again, Coles Hill is the largest undeveloped uranium project in the U.S. I'll talk about that a bit more in a second. It expands our U.S. portfolio. Many of you may know we have quite a few assets in the U.S., including past producing mines in Utah that we acquired last year from Energy Fuels. This project is very complementary to that. And the U.S. is a very important jurisdiction. Uranium companies in the U.S. traded a premium globally. And why is that? The U.S. is the largest consumer of nuclear power with very small uh, current domestic production and U.S. producers traded a premium. The project complements our global portfolio. So we look at it on a U.S. basis, but we look at it on the global uh, portfolio basis, and it's a major growth in our, in our global resources, and it's very consistent with our strategy. So we've messaged all along that our, that our strategy is to continue to grow this portfolio through M&A, and this, this acquisition certainly fills that bill. It's a strong business case. Mentioned up front, it's accretive. Uh, on many different metrics. And the value of Virginia is underpinned by the land value, which I'll touch on later, and a solar option agreement, which the company signed uh, several months ago. 
We also believe that being bigger, adding this this uh, this project and this company into into uh, our company will enhance our market visibility. We'll be a larger market cap company, and we expect that will ultimately drive additional ETF buying and market attention. There is strong support for this transaction. I highlighted the voting support both from the board of Virginia and some of their some of their main shareholders. And we think this transaction is very well well timed. The uranium sector is set up. It's poised for a breakout. The fundamentals are the strongest they've been in in a decade. And we think that uh, the uranium sector is poised again for for a significant breakout in the near term. We also think this jurisdiction has a lot of upside potential. We'll talk about that in a second. Virginia as a state is going all in on nuclear. And we think that this project could be an important source of fuel for that uh, nuclear renaissance in the state. Why does it benefit Virginia shareholders? <clears throat> we think that it, uh, it, of course, it offers exposure to our global portfolio for people that were, for investors in Virginia who were invested in a single asset, single jur jur jurisdiction, they get exposure to the full portfolio of companies that are projects that CUR has. It also expands their, their exposure to the US through our near-term production assets in the US. And Virginia shareholders, it gets them access to a strengthened team and board. And uh, we think that the this, this CUR board uh, will be significant and, and strong stewards of their project as we move forward. It's a strong business case for Virginia shareholders. It's a significant and immediate offer premium at 57% uh, based on our closing prices yesterday and the enhanced market visibility, increased financial strength and strong support from our shareholders as well, I think will go a long way to supporting Virginia shareholders. So we'll take a few slides to go through the project itself. <clears throat> Here's where it's located in South Central Virginia. It's 100% owned by Virginia Energy. There's about 3,000 acres. The property is, is, there's significant infrastructure around the property. And so it's very easy to access. Um, and importantly, Virginia already has operating nuclear power plants. And again, we think this is a very good indication uh, as to why this is a strong jurisdiction to, to be trying to develop uranium mines in. The history of the project, it was founded in, in the late 70s, and the previous operators, including Virginia, have undertaken significant drilling. They put out uh, resource estimates, a preliminary economic assessment. However, in 2013, development activities were suspended on the project due to the current moratorium on uranium mining in the state. When we drill down to the project itself, <clears throat> again, it was founded in 1979. Marlene, the previous, the, the initial owner, uh, drilled significant number of holes on the on the project, and then Virginia Energy itself, in in the mid 2000s, completed a significant amount of drilling. It's two deposits. Uh, there's higher grade core to it and a lower grade halo. You can see the resource. This is a very substantial historic estimate. Uh, this is the resource that uh, Virginia put out in 2013 nearly 160, oh, sorry, over 160 million pounds in both categories at a decent grade. We see expansion potential, a long strike and a depth. And importantly, the drill permits are in place uh, to go ahead and, and, uh, and, and test the exploration potential in the project. Where does this project stack, stack up versus the peers? Um, and this is a very telling slide, and you can see that the Coles Hill project stands very high uh, above its peers in terms of the largest single project resources in the United States. Many of these projects, you know, some of our uh, some of our peers are, are, are well known, including Energy Fuels, of course, which is a big shareholder of CUR and our partner. They have some very large projects. Um, also, our Tony M project fits on this list on the far left hand side. But uh, of course, we think Coles Hill stands uh, head and shoulders above the rest, particularly in terms of size. And we talked about earlier the additional value drivers. And what's important about the land position here is there are leased lands, but they're also wholly owned lands. And so if you look at the map on the right hand side, on the, gr in the green and the yellow sections are lands that are owned by Virginia. And these lands, we think, underpin the value of this acquisition. They can be sold ultimately. Um, should we not be able to move the project ahead and create value for the shareholders? But also, as importantly, particularly on the yellow land, 
Uh, Virginia lat it, earlier this year signed an option with a solar development company for about a thousand of those acres to develop a solar field. And if this solar field goes ahead, it could generate a substantial uh, stream of cash flow to the company and that company being us post the acquisition. And we think this is an, this is an important value driver to the acquisition. There's a number of other solar solar uh, fields in the area. And so we think this is a very good chance of going in ahead. And importantly, the area that's being allocated for the solar option does not cover the resource. It does not impede our potential development of the project. I think it's important to talk about the permitting history for a second. Um, you may or may not know that Virginia has a, in place a uranium mining moratorium. That moratorium has been in place since 1982. And several times over the last 40 years, that moratorium has been, uh, has been talked about being turned over. And there's a lot of detail here on the slide. Again, I encourage uh, watchers to go and read through this and, and, and look online for additional information about this. The bottom line here, is the moratorium is in place it's been it has not been overturned the number the, the multiple times that it has been tried to overturn over the last four, over the last 40 years and in fact um virginia over the last seven years has has taken the state to court to try to overturn this uh this moratorium it has been unsuccessful uh in those endeavors for various reasons. The, the most important takeaway of this slide is that the right to govern uranium mining is, is wholly on the state. And the state of Virginia has the opportunity in the future to make mining of uranium in the state legal. And we know exactly what it will take. And on the right hand side, it's a bill rescinding the moratorium and the adoption of a regulatory framework. And, uh, and we know that uranium mining can be done safely in other jurisdictions. We know that, that a framework can be developed for the state. And we think that there's a very good opportunity in the coming years for the state to overturn this moratorium. And particularly, why do we think that's the case? Why we think it's the case is when you look at what's happened in the state most recently, and we talk about it right here, is, in, is just last month, the, the governor of Virginia put forth his 2022 energy plan. Among other things, the energy plan um, is going all in on, on nuclear power. And what that means is Virginia is a nuclear, a nuclear state and the governor believes that nuclear is the path forward, not just for, for globally reducing uh, carbon emissions. And, and I think that, uh, that many of the watchers here will understand the role that nuclear could play but particularly within the state, there are opportunities to advance uh, nuclear power, both in terms of the generation, but in terms of, uh, but also in terms of research and development. And Governor Yonkin has a, a specific plan to highlight nuclear energy and put a lot of resources towards it. Again, what does that look like in terms of where Virginia is? Virginia is nuclear. There's four reactors operating at two plants. About 14% of the power in, in Virginia is generated from nuclear energy. Those plants uh, require about 2 million pounds of uranium per year. The, the Coles Hill project could operate those plants for 80 years, um, whereas right now those plants are being filled by, by nuclear fuel that's being mined in other jurisdictions around the world, not the US. And here we have some statistics about what's happening in the state in terms of, in terms of nuclear. It's both on the, the current electrical generation, it's in the SMR field, it's in defense, it's in research and development, but it's a very pro-nuclear state. And we think that ultimately it will become a pro-Uranium mining state. And then more broadly speaking, the U.S. is, is the most, um, the largest consumer of, of, of Uranium in the world, thanks to having the largest reactor fleet in the world. But what's happened in the U.S. over the years is that the amount of domestic Uranium production has shrunk basically to nothing. So you have the largest consumer with zero domestic supply, and that's something that the government wants to change. And, and I'm not going to read through each of, these, uh, each of these bullet points here, but suffice it to say, the government is very much in favor of domestic supply 
and we believe the coal sale could be an important, uh, important component of supplying uh, domestic uh, demand. So where does Coles Hill fit into the global uh, portfolio of CUR? You can see it sits there. It, it materially increases our global uranium exposure. Pro forma, post the acquisition of Coles Hill, our resource base in uranium moves to globally over 250 million pounds. Our vanadium resource, which you can see there, is also still over 100 million pounds. And again, with our with our focus on our near-term production mines in the U.S., the Tony M mine, the Rim mine, and the Sage mine, the Coles Hill project is uh, is a is a very complementary acquisition. And then taking a step back, you know, how do we look at the portfolio? And and we've been working on this uh, graphic, which which sort of encapsulates the strategy. And while we've been very active in ac acquiring projects of the, over the coming years. It, it, it had they all have been for a reason and the way that we look at the portfolio is kind of in these three buckets we have near-term production potential and that's the tony m the narrows and the rim mine that we just talked about we have our mid-term development projects that's australia that's argentina and we also have some other non-core u.s projects and then we have this category of longer term call options that's squarely where coles hill field coles hill fits we clearly need a change uh, in the jurisdiction in terms of overturning the moratorium in order to advance Coles Hill. We also have the Matouche project in Quebec, which is a potentially world-class project, very high grades in Quebec. Again, we need, we need some jurisdictional uh, improvements to move those projects ahead. We think that all of these, ultimately what we're looking to do is build a portfolio of production assets, moving projects from the two the two bubbles on the left into that right near-term production bubble. And, and, and we, we can move those over both from a permitting uh, success perspective or an exploration and development uh, success perspective. We can also move projects out of the portfolio into spin-outs like we did with Labrador Uranium, projects that, that don't meet the criteria to necessarily move over, to, over into that far right bucket can be, can be uh, moved into spin coast. And as we did with Labrador, we'll give our shareholders direct exposure to those uh, spin codes if, if and when we move ahead with them. And so in summary, the company has an attractive portfolio of uranium projects. We're in top tier jurisdictions. We have high grades on global scale, significant past expenditures across all of our projects and near term production potential, particularly in the US with those projects I just, I just talked about. We continue to be active evaluating new opportunities. We talk about this a lot. Of course, the coal sale acquisition is one of those opportunities. We have a number of other ones in the pipeline. We have a compelling valuation. We're well-funded with over $20 million to execute on this business plan. And we think outperform in this coming bull market. And we have a proven track record. Our team has decades of experience in the sector. Increasingly, we've been adding technical expertise to the team and uh, we'll continue to do so as we look to advance these projects towards production. Thank you everyone for your time and we're available for questions uh, and uh, look forward to engaging with uh, people on this transaction um, and uh, we'll be back very soon.